Good morning. It is Friday, January 22nd, 2021. On behalf of the members of Hope Community United Methodist Church, I come to you this morning with a morning devotional. Uh, my name is Jack Womack. I'm one of the pastors at Hope Community United Methodist Church. Uh, J.T. LaRue is another. We are delighted to serve you and to serve others as we do this media broadcast that goes to places we don't even begin to know. It is, of course, Friday, so that's a TGI Friday day. Thank God it's Friday. And today we're going to uh, dig a little bit into Hebrews, which we did the other day as well, and uh, just talk a little bit about covenants, I think. This is in the uh, eighth chapter, and it begins with the sixth verse. It says, but Jesus has now obtained a more excellent ministry. And to that degree, he is the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need to look for a second one. God finds fault with them when he says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their ancestors. On the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, for they did not continue in my covenant. So I had no concern for them, says the Lord, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds, write them on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. In speaking of a new covenant, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and growing old will soon disappear. Now, you may not recognize some of those words, but they come from Jeremiah in the 31st chapter, uh, verse 31, where the new covenant is first introduced to us. And the writer of Hebrews is talking to the Jews who would have well known that scripture. And they are saying that, that, that Jesus has come to fulfill that new covenant. But I think the things that we need to remember about it is where it says, they shall not teach one another or say to one another, know the Lord for they shall all know me. From the least of these to the greatest. For I, this is God speaking, will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. We spend an inordinate amount of time uh, reflecting on the past. The things that we've done, the things that we uh, were a part of, and there's no question we need to confess them. We need to remember them briefly, and then we need to move on. So many times things happen and we uh, consume ourselves with guilt and shame. And that shame prevents us from really fully understanding a scripture where God says, I will be merciful toward them and I will remember their sins no more. Now, you know, we've all sinned. Uh, we all probably have sinned recently. The point isn't that we keep getting forgiven for the same ones. The point is that we understand what forgiveness means. The forgiveness means we're unleashed, we're unbound, we're reborn. We can start over. And I know every year in January the 1st or so, people make New Year's resolutions and they attempt to start over. 
but they're really not starting over. It's thinking that we will not do this anymore. We will not do that anymore. In other words, they're all, everything is bound by what their past was. The followers of Jesus, they had some significant choices to make. It wasn't easy. Jesus sends out 12, 12 of his many followers and they are challenged to go out and heal the sick, free people from their sin. It's, a, to my mind anyway, a common thing that we're all called. Where the issue is, is what it means to answer God's call. Oh, it begins when we are baptized and we say those words that we use in our liturgy, we renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness. That's fine, we do that. But then we embrace the power that Jesus Christ gives us to live into his will, into the future, into the kingdom of God. I think we're too much stuck in what was. We're too much stuck in what we wish could have been. And we miss the opportunity to be what God calls us to be now. God is calling. Are we really, really, really responding with a yes? Are we willing to say to God, you send us, we'll go? Are we willing to trust that he will give us the words? That he will give us the power that he said he would give us? Do we really believe those scriptures where he says, you will do greater things than I? Or do we live in this sense of inadequacy that we're not good enough, that we're not powerful enough? And if we start there, then we tend to look for others that are more powerful to follow. Friends, we don't need another savior. We don't need a person to lead us anywhere. We have Christ. Christ is so close to us that he's in our breath. His call on our lives is so deep to us, it's in our heart. But we live in a world where the response to God's call means differentiation. It means we need to look different, act different, sound different, live different. I see so many people that I know are good faithful church attenders. And I know they have a good heart and they get caught up in the, the, the ways of the world, the struggles of the world. It's, it's kind of interesting how much we give credence to people that will never even know our name, that don't know who we are and don't know what we are. And we have a savior that already knows us, that knew us from the moment we were created, we were knitted together in our mother's womb. We're never alone, but sometimes we feel lonely. And to me, that sense of loneliness, when, that, when you start to feel that sense of loneliness, what it means is that we're, uh, we're not connected to the spirit which unites us all. The body of Christ isn't limited to a congregation or a denomination. It's not limited at all. What we're talking about here is a God that cares about everyone. That is a mediator of the new covenant, which is enacted. It shows us that we have hope. We have an opportunity because Jesus has the most excellent ministry. God finds fault with us when we look for other places and other times and sometimes we pay the consequences the consequences of sin are death the consequences of faith power forgiveness are life it's my prayer that we all choose life it's my prayer that we start to believe that if god loves us all and we're agents, ministers of the gospel, we have to start to practice that kind of love. Wesley, John Wesley struggled with that. 
when he told the Moravians he didn't have faith? Where could he get more faith? How did he get stronger faith? One of the Moravians told him, says, preach faith until you get it. And then preach faith because you have it. I think that's where I am today, is I'm trying to preach faith because I have it. I'm not worried about tomorrow because I know who holds tomorrow. But I want to live today to its fullest. And I hope you will too. Let's pray. Gracious God, we embrace the new covenant where your word is written on our hearts, where everyone will receive and know the power of Christ. where we will understand that he is our God and we are his people and we shall all know the Lord. There will be that day. I pray for that day to come sooner than later. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And friends, I hope for you the best today. I hope you also will remember to consider us when it comes to Chile in a few days. And uh, on the 12th, and be a part of our community as we do that. God bless you. Have a great day.